back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today we're here with one of the industry's most controversial men. He needs no introduction. The guy I'm talking about is Boston Lloyd. Welcome. What's up? Hey. You got your 3CC hat on. Yep, I do. <laughs> we can't see you. <laughs> Come up a little higher. Hey, Turn you your camera off? down a little. There you go. Down? Right there? Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Okay. What's with the beard? You look like Lou Ferrigno from the Hercules movies back in the day. Yeah, I guess I, I grew the beard out, beard out for the show, and then I was debating on cutting it, and I just left it kind of. Because uh, honestly, like during prep and stuff, when I was like on like low carbs, you know, I'm a low carb dieter like you, and then uh, yeah. I was on DN. P, I got really lazy, man. I was like showering every third day and shit. So I was like, screw this shit. So I'm just, I just started growing a beard. <laughs> what What did the uh, use of DNP have to do with you only showering every three days? Wait, say that again, Dave. I said, what did the use of your of DNP have to do with you only showering every three days? I would think you'd shower more often because you probably was sweating shit, so much. Like, makes you so lazy. Like, I just had, I just was literally like sitting down like the whole time. Besides when I was training, like. I was sleeping all day. Like the DMP drains the shit out of me. Now, you know, it's funny because you're one of the most uh, outspoken people. Uh, you're, I, I, you might have a, a zero, I call a zero filter on you. There's nothing that you won't talk about. Uh, and of course, you had to start off the show with the most controversial uh, performance enhancing drug that probably on the market, which is DNP or dinitrophenol. Um, do you, why do you use that? You, you get in shape pretty easily. Yeah, I, I just I, I like to experiment, you know, with it a lot. I, I put a lot of my clients on it, my prep clients, um, and I, I use it in the beginning of prep. I think it works better when people are higher body fat. Um, the first twenty three days of my diet, I went zero carbs and I did DNP, and I went from uh, I went from two forty five to two twenty seven in twenty three days, and I was basically show ready after twenty three days. Yeah. And then I ate into my show, and I ended up before I pulled my water, I was two forty-five. So basically, from the start of my prep to the beginning, uh, the start to the end, I stayed the same weight. My body just completely changed. Weren't you worried about losing muscle, losing weight that quickly? Um, I mean, I might have, but remember when I when that happened, I was still ten weeks out. So then I was slowly filling out. So I I definitely put on. I want to say I put on a lot of muscle because I can't use uh, like Anadrol and stuff in the off season, and I, I got up to 200 mg of Anadrol a day in prep, and uh, I feel like that really put on a lot of size because I mean, uh, last time I competed, Dave, I was 226, skinny fat, like at the Connecticut, I was watery, uh, I did everything wrong, and then I stepped on stage, you know, I was 245 before I pulled my water. And uh, I weighed in at 238. So, I mean, I put on all that size with no off season. And I think I did it in that 12 weeks. Wow. Because yeah. I went from, I went from, I eat about 350 grams of protein in the off season. I was eating close to 550 to 600 grams of protein in my prep. You know, and my, my carbs were anywhere from 45 to 100. And, you know, my fats were probably anywhere from 100 to 150. Now, I mean, DNP is, is dangerous enough. I mean, if you use it wrong, you could obviously burn yourself up. Uh, but the, obviously, Anadrol is, is very toxic. And when people think of Anadrol, you know, most people say, oh, I did 50 milligrams, uh, you know, a day for four weeks or so. You're on 200 milligrams of, uh, of I started. Anadrol. I started at 50, tapered up to 200, and then slowly tapered down to 100, and then pulled it out a week out. You, and you don't feel like uh, you don't feel bad when you're on that stuff or anything. I felt. I mean, the whole prep, I was tired as hell. You know how it is. But um, I, I just and it was it was human grade anadrol. You know, I, it was it was good stuff. So I felt very lethargic. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, it definitely helped keep fullness. Like I said, I put on all that weight during prep, and I was getting leaner and bigger during the prep. Um, another big change I used, uh, I used, instead of using all generic GH, I used Humatrope from Lilly and I used, um, you know, and I, and then I used Chinese GH on top of that. I think that was a big, big, uh, that helped a lot too. Now, you're a big believer in that you, uh, you don't feel that the Chinese, uh, GH is full strength. So you use exorbitant amounts of it to compensate for the fact that it's Correct. under dose, Correct. right? If I, if, I, if I was to recommend, like if, if somebody could only get Chinese, Obviously, my clients, they can only afford five to whatever I use, but if you're doing this for a living, 
Uh, I would say the best is, you know, 15 to 20, I use a Chinese or anywhere from, you know, six to, you know, six to eight, I use a farm. Right. What was the most GH you've used in one particular day? Do you remember? I was doing, I, I was doing 15, I use a generic and uh, six, I use a farm. So 21 I use of growth hormone per day. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. All right, but we're going to come back to the drugs because I know that's what everyone wants to hear about. But let, let's take a step back. At what age was the first uh, – how old were you, if you could even remember? You know, Were you even able to speak when you took your first uh, anabolic steroid? It's funny. My stepdad is a, was a power lifter, and he always had his steroids below the, the, count, the cabinet. I knew where they were. <laughs> so I went under the cabinet at – six. I was, I was 16. I went under the cabinet. I stole his steroid stash. <laughs> He had uh, it was it was test sipionate from Univet, and I remember he only had insulin needles in there, and I thought those were steroid needles. So I thought ten units was one IU. So I pulled out twenty units, thinking I'm sure shooting uh, two cc's of test, and I shot it in my leg, and I was literally limping like for like a week straight. My dad goes, "What the hell's wrong with you?" And I go, "Oh, dad, I train legs hella hard. Like I don't, you know, I was I'm I'm really hurting." And he actually like believed me. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was from a it was from an insulin sh uh, shot 20, uh, 20 units into the le the leg, and then I started getting into the whole pro hormone thing, and that's when when, when I got that crazy bad gyno, and that was right. when I was seventeen, and I started my first injectable cycle at eighteen. But I mean, I consider pro hormones, you know, you know, steroids. But I mean, like I said, my parents actually, I was going to start my first steroid cycle at seventeen, and they had a feeling something was up. Because I was on all these pro hormones, and I went from 170 to 230 in high school. Oh my Because I wrestled the 170 class, and all of a sudden, my senior year, I'm up, up to, I'm up to like 230. They looked in my room, they searched my whole room while I was at work, <laughs> and they found my test and deca cycle. That was the first cycle I was ever going to run. They took it away from me on my 18th birthday. They gave it back to me, <laughs> and I and I started a, and I started a couple days after that. I guess when your parents kind of are bodybuilders, you know, it, it's it's not so hard to transition in, into using anabolic steroids. Now, um, what made you decide at 18 you were going to go all out at that point? Because, you know, with your mentality, I'm, I'm shocked you didn't do it before that. Did you realize that maybe 18 was the right age, that you, you know, we'd be more mature? What was what was, prompted the decision? I was, still doing, I was still doing very low-dose stuff. Like I hired Dave Kalick when I was like 18. You know Dave Kalick. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he brought me into that the one of the, it's called the muscle contest in Culver City. I ended up winning my teen class. I won my novice class. I won the novice overall. I won my class in open, and I lost the overall by one to one point by a guy that Alex Azarian trained. Um, and I was, you know, Dave, Dave's a good guy, but he cut all my trend and he cut all my tests two weeks out. I lost twenty pounds in two weeks. I was shredded, but I was like a little swimmer. You know, I, I was tiny. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I, like I said, it's a progressive effect. I was very low doses at 18, started, you know, getting higher dose at 19. I was buying, like, fake-ass GH that was probably 8CG. My balls were, like, swollen up at 19. And, then, you know, you find out that, you know, all right, this GH is better. So it's all a progressive effect. My steroids slowly get higher every year. My GH slowly gets higher every year. Uh, it, it's kind of a progressive effect. Can, can it really get any higher than it already is, though? No, I'm probably because I'm not no longer competing anymore. I'm pretty moderate. Like like this is moderate to me. I'm doing uh, 350 tests every other day, uh, 225 deca every day, 125 trend every other day, um, and I'm doing uh, 250 EQ every other day. And then I do uh, right now. I'm doing four I no. Hey, I just up my GH to six. I use a GH, and then ten I use of uh, ten I use of Chinese six. I use farm. Now that that is pretty moderate f for you dosage wise. Um, there, what a lot of those people. Are, those, are, those are the doses that you recommend. No, I know those. Yeah, the, except for the GH, those are the doses I would recommend. Yeah. You're right, um, but that's for someone who's competing. You just mentioned that you're not going to be competing. What? Why all of a sudden? I've heard you say this before, probably at least four or five times over the last five years that you're done competing. Why now are you announcing that you're done competing no, again? No, no, no. I said I only. I said I was going to be done competing after the Connecticut show last year, and I looked like shit. I couldn't go out. And Doing that, my business went to shit. My training went to shit. Everyone was like, "Boston sucks. He's garbage." Like whatever. <laughs> I made I, I made a comeback this year. My physique spoke for itself. My business is at an all time high. Everything's coming back. There's no reason for me to ever step on stage now. Before, 
you know, I look like shit. I, I had to get back on stage. I, I can't leave the scene like that. Right. So you feel um, that you left with a, you left in, on a good note this time. Exactly. And there's no. I've had promoters contact me, and you know, they're, they're not going to. They wouldn't give me a fair look, anyways. And to be honest, the whole backstage. When I was a teenager, I I liked it, Dave. I actually liked competing. I liked the whole thing. You know, I liked everything about it. And now I'm backstage with classic physique, men's physique, novice figure, open figure, and I'm backstage like, what the hell is this shit? You know, I don't enjoy this. You know, I'm putting on fake tan, shaving myself. Like, I don't know. I just I lost all passion for actually wow. for competing. You know, I I lost it all. And how old are you? You still what are you? Twenty five now. I just turned 24. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you're pretty young. I, I don't believe that you're, you're retired. I think you will come back, and I, and I predict it will probably happen in 2017. But uh, we'll, we'll see. That will remain to be seen. Now, is your – is, is your, If yeah. I was – I tell people this. If I was to ever get back on stage, I would do a local show. I hate traveling. I hate, hate traveling. It would be a local show in five to ten years. I will look like – a real, I will look like a really good pro. I will continue to live the lifestyle. I'll train. I'll take the drugs. I'll do everything it takes to be the biggest and the best bodybuilder I could be. And I will step on stage looking like a pro at some shitty amateur show and make sure they give it to me. And my goal at one point was to reject the pro card by the time I was 30. Yeah. And, you know, they're giving pro cards out like candy now. I mean, that would be funny, but they would never do it to me. I mean, I would never accept an IFB pro card even if I was granted one. What, now, why is that? I, I I can't stand it. I can't stand the whole organization. Like, it that would be the biggest – Achievement for me would be to reject the pro card, but they, they will never. They would never. I mean, obviously do that. But you do. You, know? you look. You like the organization because you compete in it. I know you don't like politics, and I know you think that you know sometimes the decisions are not fair. I don't, fair. Know, Dave. I don't like it anymore with the new divisions. When I got into it, it was in two thousand and nine. When that's when I really liked it. It was women's figure, men's bodybuilding, women's bodybuilding. That's it. Right. And I actually enjoyed it, Dave. I, I did. But now it's just too much. Novice figure, novice bikini. I don't. I, I can't even go to shows anymore. But don't you I, I think that's do good for the sport, that it's, it's making the sport grow? Uh, it's possible, but it's hurting bodybuilding. So I, my, my uh, suggestion was to put bodybuilding on its own day. Just have bodybuilding. Yes, I, yes then that would be awesome. I, I, if they did that, Dave... That would be awesome. I, I completely agree with you. If they had bodybuilding like Friday and they had all just all bodybuilders backstage and everyone in that auditorium was to watch bodybuilders, I think that would be awesome if they separated it. But when they make it into one show, now you got like a beauty pageant, you got bikini chicks, too long you day. got men's yeah. physique, and then you all crush it into one, It's then it becomes too much. Yeah, I have I have a problem uh, going to these shows now too because they're too long. I agree with you on that. So now let let's talk about uh, the uh, I call it the video heard around the world or the uh, injection heard around the world. You did this video on YouTube where you uh, showed all your injections you do. You injected Correct. your chest, this that, peptides, GH, IGF one. I don't even uh, synthol. Um, I guess nothing that was technically illegal. But, uh, I mean, it was, no, you, I mean, you put they, it out there. I, I, I shot steroids on camera. That's illegal. But right. remember, with, with the whole law and stuff like that, you, you're not showing they, – they can't prove anything. I could have been shooting vegetable oil, you know? Right. Yeah, but don't you, feel, don't you feel like you're maybe making yourself a target by, by showing people that you're doing all this on, on camera and documenting it? If, if, I was, if I was still selling steroids like I was when I was 20 years old, I would be very worried, but I don't. I mean, I, I, I'm simply, I have my businesses, you know, I, have, I sell my synthol, I, I have that gay for pay site now, um, I'm, you know, doing everything on my own. I don't, the whole, whole steroid things, I take them for myself, right. I give people advice and that's it. Now, if I was still selling steroids and doing that for a living, yeah, I'd be very worried and I probably wouldn't be doing videos, what? but I'm, I'm, I'm safe, I know what I'm doing and I'm not crossing any boundaries and uh, I've talked to a few lawyers you know I'm not doing anything illegal they can't okay. you know I, I, they can't prove anything okay so so in other words right you, what you're saying is that it's impossible it could be just for uh, entertainment value what you're doing correct and what, and what are they going to do if they wanted to bust me for personal use it was a slap on the wrist you know whatever but the thing is 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 they're not looking for that kind of stuff and a lot of cops actually have you know talked to me emailed me they're actually very happy that I come out with this kind of stuff. They think that, you know, and they're not, I haven't really seen that many times where people have gotten busted for just steroids. It's usually like pain pills and steroids and all that stuff. So, I mean, like I said, 
I'm not doing anything illegal on camera. Um, I, everything's for personal use. I don't sell this shit like I used to. So, I mean, I, I feel pretty protected. Do, do you feel that maybe it's uh, sending the wrong message out there to these very impressionable young kids? You'd be surprised. All these kids are, are scared now. I have get so many emails that are like, thank God for putting this out. I didn't know that bodybuilding, I thought bodybuilding was a couple shots a week of steroids and, you know, and, you know, training. Everyone's like, I didn't know it took, you know, this much stuff. And, you know, you guys, you got guys like Michael Lockett, you got guys like John Del Rosa, you got guys that are, that are genetically elite that probably can take under three grams of steroids a week and a couple, you know, I use a growth and be awesome. But then you got, got you know, you got 90% of the other, you know, guys out there that don't have the elite genetics that do have to push the envelope. And uh, that's what, you know, the majority of people are. So if the majority of people are trying to get into bodybuilding, I think they should know what, what needs to be done. First of all, nobody's going to be able to afford all that. They don't know where to get it. Second of all, it scares most kids for, uh, for away from it. Obviously, you're going to get a couple of kids that are like, yeah, let's get blown up and, you know, let's do it. And, but it, majority of the people are going to are going to turn their heads away from it, which I've already got. Uh, Mark Lobiner actually made a video saying he thinks it would scare a lot of kids too. Do, do you think that you're more hardcore than uh, Rich Piana now? Oh, he's a phony. He's a phony. He sucks. He used to he used to be good, Dave. Like in the beginning, he was good. He was honestly like his content was good. But then when you mix when you mix money with these guys, and, and now he makes videos. Rich Piana makes videos three times a week for entertainment purposes to get views, to get followers. He wants the fa fans. He wants the fame. Then you got shit about making videos about if your dick hangs long, low, you know, lower than your balls. And, you know, he's making videos that he's just making shit up now just for entertainment. Bigger by the day. Dave, let me get this bigger by the day. Never, never got on a scale in front of people where, you know, he was weighed. The guy's never been 311 pounds. You know, he gets surgery in Mexico, you know, for his arms and his delts and stuff. He, you know, it's just, it's very phony to me. And it's very sad that he's gone that route for fame, for fame and followers. And obviously he's very successful and I give him credit for that. But I don't give him credit for now lying just for followers. What, what do you think he does to his arms and shoulders in Mexico? I, I haven't heard this. Well, his, supposedly, because you remember, I trained at the powerhouse in Chatsworth where Rich used to train. Supposedly, his ex-wife you know, came out and spilled the beans a little bit that he goes to Mexico and gets some kind of like uh, collagen shot in his uh, arms and his shoulders. Right. Would you Cal be, would calves, you, too, I think. Would you be interested in doing that? Like, Would that be something Hell, that you would no, ever do? No. no. You know what? You know what? And a lot, a lot of these guys that that um, by the way, my synthol cells have shot through the roof since that video. And the reason why, Dave, is because everyone thinks you take synthol and you're going to look like those guys in Brazil that do like 20 cc's of mineral oil, right, right. you know, in each head or whatever. And I give the protocol I give to my clients is the first protocol that you set me up on. I was going to say it's probably uh, my protocol that I give out for the stuff I sell. It's yeah. the same exact protocol you gave me four years ago when I started Synthol. And the shit, if you go deep enough, you know, you if your arms are 14, 15 inches, you go an inch. Now, as your arms get bigger, you go deeper, you know, and you, you keep it below, you know, underneath the muscle and, and it looks completely natural. You can never tell that I shot my arms with anything, you know. No, no, except for that one bad, that you had that terrible infection. Whatever, whatever happened, when oh, your, your arm that was, was, that wasn't synthol. That was water-based Winstrol. Oh, and you, what, what happened to your arm? It looked like someone burned you, like with an electric yeah, I cord. Did, I, I shot, I ruptured the ulnar nerve. My arm swelled up to like this big and stretched my skin and pulled my skin away, and that's why I got all the scarring now. Still, uh, yeah, but you, I'm surprised you haven't put a tattoo over it yet. I will. I will. I, I am going to get a tat, tat over it because I'm not a big tattoo guy. Don't get me wrong. I would never even have. I wouldn't even have this tattoo up here if it wasn't for scars. Because I got three. I got three cysts cut out of my shoulder, and now this tattoo is actually ruined because of my arm swelling. So I got to get this retouched, and then I'm going to wait a couple more months till this scar is fully set in and not really pink anymore, and then I'm going to get another tat. But then I'll be done from there. All right. Now, what, what's going on? You mentioned earlier, I didn't even know you had this. You, you said something about a gay for pay site that you're uh, running now? Hey, it, it, out, of all the, out of all the businesses that I'm, I'm included in and everything like that, it has been the biggest failure, Dave. It, oh, has, it has been the biggest failure. I thought I, thought I was going to launch the site and eventually I was going to be able to sit on my ass and collect $100,000 from it. 
I hired somebody to run the site. I promoted it, you know, a couple times on Facebook and in YouTube, and uh, I thought it was going to blow up. I really thought I was going to be able to sit on my ass and collect a paycheck. Dave, I haven't made a fucking penny off this site, and I invested four thousand dollars into it. Wow. Now, what what is the the premise of it? I mean, it's anything. It, uh, female. Males could sign up. Males could sign up. You, you know, you could jack off on camera. You could do whatever the hell you want on camera. It doesn't matter. Right. Um, you know, and you got people that are paying. You know, like eight, nine. You know, you as the as the employer, the the camera could do whatever you want. You know, but you set your rate. You know, let's say you want to get paid four ninety nine a minute. Right. You know, right. and that person comes in and joins you. You get you get charged four ninety nine a minute, and then I take half of that, gotcha. and then I pay my web guy another half. So I thought I was going to get, you know, make the $4,000 back because there would be a lot of people that signed up, which there has been a lot of people that signed up to CAM, and there's been a lot of people that visited site. The only problem is the cameras aren't sitting on their computer waiting for, you know, people to, to pick them up. So it's just, it's been, a, it's been the biggest failure out of everything I've started. And like you said, you lose some, you gain some. I'll use that $4,000 as a tax write-off for the, for the software that I invested into, and I'll just write it off, and I'll, I'll cancel it by the end of the year. Maybe you should uh, – I, I don't think your audience are gay guys. That's what the problem is. You, maybe you should have someone – maybe you should have guys doing, like, steroid injections on camera, and you might sell – you might get a lot more guys <laughs> signing up for it. You know? Steroid tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> like, like who would be um, – like, um, who is the talent that you got working for you? Are you allowed to reveal that? The what? The talent. Like, who are the uh, the man? The anyone. Anyone can sign up. Anyone. Right. But do you know who they are? Do you like know the guys like who are I, like performing I don't, on Dave, camera? I don't even. I don't even look at the site. I I pay someone to run that site. Oh well, that's the problem. You know, you're the biggest marketer of everything you do. Well, I'm I'm the marketer. Yeah, I I could promote it. But what I'm saying is, we need to get people that sit on camera. And I think. If I was a camera too, I wouldn't sit on I wouldn't sit on a computer and wait hours for somebody to come pick me up on a private cam. Hmm. I just didn't really think it through. I thought gay for pay, bodybuilding, everyone would want to do it and join in. Yeah. And I thought I'd, I would I thought it would start off slow and then all of a sudden in 5 years I might be the biggest cam site in the industry and everyone would be jerking off on camera, but that right. wasn't the case. Yeah, but but that's not your audience. That's the problem. That, you know, it would be like me trying to sell that. That's not my audience. My audience are the people who want information and you're your guys, yeah. your audience is like the steroid guys. I just guys. thought that I have a big following of bodybuilders, and a lot of them would love to, instead of working a nine to five, do gay shit on camera. Yeah. I mean, I would rather masturbate on camera than work a nine to five. Would you? Would you do that? Would if you needed the money? Oh yeah, I would. I would rather do that than than work a nine to five, one hundred percent. Okay. Um, I mean, I mean, back in your bodybuilding day, what would you? Would you rather do that? No, I probably wouldn't have done that. I, you know what? But I, I, I always had a way of making money in terms of. Um, you know, doing seminars, and I had, and back then, supplement contracts were, were big, uh, so I wasn't desperate. I don't know. I never got to the de desperate stage, so I, I guess I can't really tell. But I know a lot of guys in California did a lot of, you know, that gay for pay stuff. So um, yeah. there was no internet then, but they did it like in person, you know. So I, I you know, I, I don't doubt that it's popular. I guess, I guess there are a lot of lazy people out there in a sense. Someone wanted to know on the uh, boards they're asking, uh, what's the difference between your synthol that you make and the stuff like that I sell, the Chris Clark synthol and the painless pumps? Well, the, the painless pumps was made by Steve DeLuca and you know me and Steve, he's like threatened to sue me and everything else yeah. and over the book. And uh, he claims, Dave, his ingredients in the painless pumps this is really sad. He claims that it's like absorbable to the body and all this stuff, right? So I had somebody hit me up. They go, Boston, they go, put this shit in your mouth. Because I'm like, Steve, do you have any lidocaine in this? They're like, put this shit in your mouth, hold it in your mouth and spit it out. So I shot a little bit in my mouth, held it in my mouth, spit it out in my sink, and my whole fucking mouth was numb for, for an hour or so. Mm. He has lidocaine in his, in his, in his uh, painless pump. So for him to say that there's no, it's all, the oils are acceptable to your body and that's why it doesn't hurt and this and that. It's bullshit. Actually, you know, it, it, it's, 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 uh, what he's putting in there is he's putting, uh, uh, what's it called? He's putting lidocaine in it, which is fine. That's fine. You know, I'm, I'm totally for that because my synthol does hurt in the beginning, but don't lie to people and just make up some shit saying you have some special oil that's, uh, you know, naturally absorbed well, to the body. Well, yeah, but let, let's be honest. The, the painless aspect of the painless pumps is afterwards. So the, the, if there is even any lidocaine, there, it's it's the after effect that doesn't hurt, and the reason why that his, his product doesn't hurt actually is because it's got electrolytes in it, and uh, a lot of times when you inject any kind of oil into the muscle, the muscles will 
will send out tons of enzymes out of the muscles and it dehydrates the muscle cell. And when the muscle cell becomes dehydrated, well, all, all prostaglandins all are produced. The ingredients that he claims that are in it is not yeah. in it. So yeah. I just, I, the painless pumps though, Dave, I, I lose fullness on that because you know what? You're, you're probably right because it doesn't create that much scar tissue. And I think no. the whole point of synthol is to create a little bit of scar tissue underneath <laughs> the, the muscle tissue to push the muscle up. <laughs> I guess that's debatable. Uh, let's let's talk about. Hold on, I got more questions for you. Hold on, let me let me check my questions here. Johnny's sending me questions. Oh, people want to know. Look, a lot of people know that you like the species nutrition products. Um, obviously, you know I send them over to you a lot, and you ask I, I for. I send them. all my clients over. To I you know you do. For, 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 You're a great refer. What? Which? What's your favorite stack? That's what people want to know. For your species? Yeah. The way I stylize, and uh, if it depends. If they're using, if some clients are, are do not like intras, intra workouts, because some bloat, some don't. So I have, I send everyone over for your isolize, because I trust you, uh, that you're, you know, I trust your products, and I also send them over for the carbolize if they're not using an intra. If they're using an in, my intra, I just have them do the the way isolate uh, your isolize post. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, a lot of people think that uh, you are a millionaire now. Are you in fact a millionaire? They, they hold on. I couldn't hear you. What'd you say? Uh, I've heard people have been asking me: are, Is Boston Lloyd a millionaire? Are you are you worth a lot of money now? You make what are you not making even, a month? Not even close. No, you're not. Not even close. What what do you make a month about? Well, I was making uh, I was making okay. So my best month ever was in 2014. No, no, my bad. 2015 before I bombed that show in Connecticut and I was I made 47,000 in one month from what what, what what would you make that much money from you know because you're not selling drugs so we know that no, no no that's 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 from okay so remember I, I own a few companies I own 33% of US fusion 33% of transformix peptides and 33% of I mean and 50% of my boss sports nutrition products oh, you don't own all your own products no, no, those I I pay out fifty percent. They ship everything for me. Oh, I got you. Okay, so you're partners with some. It's kind of like what Rich Piana does. Correct. No, no, Rich. The five percent line. Rich is actually. He says he's this company, but he actually doesn't. He pays out just like I do. Right. I said it's similar to what Rich does. What correct. Do. Correct. Yeah. Got you. Now, what what is the mo what do you think is the most profitable thing that you've done in in, in as far as business go? Putting aside selling steroids, we know that. The, my, my training, uh, my, my tr training in Transformix is is one and two. The Synthol line, Dave, I'm selling up to four. Uh, I average about four bottles a day right now. Okay. I make fifty five dollars per bottle. Um, so you know that's about two hundred and twenty something dollars a, a, a day in just the Synthol. But number my number one is the Transformix peptides because awesome products. As far as peptides goes, there's nobody that has real IGF out there. Right. The Transformix by far is the, the number one moneymaker for me right now. How do you know that the uh, peptides are real? Uh, say that again, you cut, you cut out a little how bit. How do you know that the peptides are real? How, how, like you're telling me that, that you are the only one who has real IGF-1. How do you know that? As, as, far, as far as the IGF, Dave, I mean, it has all the, the legit, you go, you know, in the beginning phases of, of using the IGF, you go a little hypoglycemic. Um, you know, and all that stuff like that. I put on every time I, I, I put, you know, throw it back into my regimen, I put on 10 pounds. Um, you know, my dad, I put him on 25 MCGs and he was on TRT tests for months before. He put on 12 pounds and was getting massive pumps. I mean, everyone that uses the IGF, Dave, they're in love with it and that's like our number one seller. I mean, right. the IGF desk, people are getting like skin tearing pumps. The, the LR3, I mean, just, all, you know, 10, 12 pounds on an average on their first use. And, and where, does, where do you guys get that stuff from? Does that come from China? No, they, they, they're, 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 they're come from the U.S. That, that's the good thing about them. Okay. So they're made here. You're right? actually, your, your, guy, your guy actually, um, he wanted me to be partners with him not too long ago. I said, dude, I'm already starting up my own company. <laughs> the guy from, um, what's it, the purchase peptides guy. You, you were like friends with him for a little bit or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he he contacted me. Well, yeah, you're. I mean, you're a very good salesman, obviously, of the products. Now, do you are you concerned that there's some, you know, because these products are supposed to be for research purposes only? Obviously, you know, you're you're out there kind of telling people that they should take these products. Is that a, is that a problem? 
No, because I, 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 I really don't. I mean, like I said, the, we, the, me and my partners, we've talked to people. We keep it as safe as possible. Okay. You could also say that about U.S. Fusion. You know, sure. they sell you know everything. We all, sell all the people. H, yeah. HCG. We sell you know everything on there. Cabergoline, Prammy, Farm Prammy tabs. I mean everything. Okay, so you and and how do do people? Do you have a coupon code or something like that you give out? Yeah, uh, uh, for the for the uh, Boss Sports Nutrition, it's Team Three CC, uh, and for the uh, Transformix Peptides dot com, it's Boston Ten. Okay, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you now with a couple names, and uh, I'm gonna say the name, and you give me your impression of that person. Okay, it's a little game we call it ping pong. Here we go, number one, Lee Priest. Uh, great physique, awesome guy, but lies a ton about what he used to use. And why do you feel that? I just, I just know what, what a body is attainable. You're not going to get this crazy ass roundness that he had on no GH and 500 megs of testosterone. There's no way. So you, now you, I know you guys has, have feuded online uh, you know, over the years. Yeah, we, we, we went back and forth a few times. Yeah. Would you ever debate him like on an iron debate situation? I will, I will debate anyone on here, Dave. You can put me on with anyone. I don't give a shit. Okay. Rich Piano, we already talked about. You already gave us your opinion. Uh, I know you had a problem with uh, Aaron and PJ Braun. What was what went on with no, that? No, I've never I've never had an issue with Aaron Singerman. I think Aaron I mean, is PJ, a great I PJ, think Aaron is a great businessman. Yeah. I think he's very smart. I think he's one, probably the probably the most successful guy in the bodybuilding industry with the whole Blackstone Labs. I, I don't like PJ Braun, Dave, because his morals. I've known. I've known what he's done. I've seen shit that he's done. I've heard it from his best friends that he's fucked over. I know what he did. You know, I know the shady shit because you know Ariella used to work with him. I just know what type of person he is, and, and I'm, I I don't like to associate myself with scumbags. Well, what has he done that you that you know of at least? Yeah, well, I just you know to 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 not get into crazy detail. He's just you know he he okay. According to from his best friend, okay, according coming coming from his best friend, when he was when he had a girlfriend, he used to have like his little phone album of all the nudes that his clients would send him, and he would like brag about it, just like a guy that would have girlfriends and like try to flirt with clients, try to get clients in their underwear, you know, try to get it be sexual with clients while he had a girlfriend, all that shit, Dave. It's just it's it's un, it's not to me, Dave. When I was single, okay, I've had, you know, up to five girl clients. Never once have I made a sexual gesture. Never once have I made a sexual comment. It's strictly business, okay? I've never once went out of my way to send chicks dick pics and all that bullshit. You know, it's just, that's just scumbag. That's jo when, when scumbags of the industry are brought up, Joey Swole comes up. Um, PJ Braun comes up and Lloyd Herford comes up. Okay, these are the three guys in the industry that are known scumbags that get nudes from their clients, are in relationships, are married. Dave, like this shit is disgusting. Like I, I just don't like to associate because everyone hates on me for being open about my steroid uses. But I would say I'm one of the most morally like good guys in the industry. You know, I don't cheat. I don't steal. I give people what they want, you know, I don't lie for an extra dollar, I don't make up bullshit, I don't get paid for my YouTube videos, I don't come up with content for a, just for attention, I don't go to the expos, I try to stay away from shows as much as possible, I, I like my house, I love my dogs, I'm a family man, I'm going to try for kids soon, I, I'm just, I, I, that's, you know, that's what, that's what it is. Well, that's, now, what, what's your, I know you have some kind of a, a thing with Joey Swoles at Shreds there, what, what's the... What's the feud with over there about that? Well, Joe, you know, they, they sell bullshit products and, you know, they talk about this and that. You know, Joey Swole, this and that. Joey Swole sent dick pics to every fucking girl I know, Dave. Every oh, really? girl that I've ever talked to, Joey Swole has kicked them a dick pic. Oh, I like this photo on fucking Instagram and he kicked me with a dick pic. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, it's well, just ridiculous. <laughs> like, literally. How like, do people and, and, do this? Hold on, boss, I got to stop you. What, like, how do guys, like, I, I don't understand how a guy would just out of nowhere just send, like, they text the picture of their penis to the, these girls? Dave, fucking, fucking Joey Swole sent a picture of his ass to Ariella, his ass. <laughs> to your girlfriend. In, yeah. in the shower, in the shower, and Ariella responds, she goes, nice shower you have. <laughs> And, and why did he send a picture? Just because he thought he was going to hook I, up I with her? I think he's just extremely insecure, Dave. Because remember, 
I, I've never been a type to to make a first move on a chick. Just I'm just I'm scared of I'm scared of rejection. I, I I'm scared of it. And I think guys like Joey Sewell, they're very insecure. But you know, when they send a hundred girls or dick pics, you know, five of them are going to respond back with a nude, and that's a game to them. They like it. They like the chase. Uh, I personally don't like the chase. I don't like to be rejected. I don't like the chase. Right. I think I, these guys like all that. Right. I would be worried that my my uh, my penis pictures would be floating around the internet, but I guess these guys. Well, fuck, don't care. I have a dick picture on the internet right now, and I sent it to a guy. <laughs> why? Why did you hold on? Why did you send you a, a picture of your penis I, to a guy? I always said, I used to always send dick pictures to my guy friends, like out of the, the shower when I look my best, like, hey, what's up? <laughs> That some people would construe that as being, you know, a little gay, wouldn't you think? Oh yeah, they would construe that as hella gay. But my friends are my good friends. They like they laugh. They'll send the same pictures back. Like, uh, bro, how do you think I look? That's just bodybuilding. You know what I mean? Uh, um, th there's another question online that uh, people want to know. Um, have you tried nalotl or nalotl, as people say? You know, to to swell your arms up at all? Yeah, I've asked you about that. I got some advice from you. I, I yeah. used it for my show actually. I started it a few weeks out just to test it out, and it's good stuff, but if you don't shoot it deep enough, it'll bubble on top of the skin, and it only takes like a few hours to, for the bubble to go down, but that, that was kind of annoying. It does work. The thing that I've noticed that it works the best, Dave, is you can keep your pump very long. So let me give you an example. I shot it before the gym, and I kept my pump for two hours post-workout, where it usually dies out 20 to 30 minutes after. So you keep your pump longer, so when you're pumping up, and you have a weak body part, you shoot it in there, you know, the night before and then the day of. Only one cc though, Dave, and this stuff is super, super, super uh, liquidy. It's like water. So it flows through a, a 25 gauge, no problem, you know, very easily. Right. Uh, I used it for my show and it, and it definitely works. It's nothing, um, I didn't load myself up with it like crazy. I did like one cc in each delt, one cc in my triceps. I didn't touch my biceps with it. But I mean, it, it definitely works, but I don't think it's anything special like the stuff back in the day, the acicaline. I think the acicaline was probably a little bit better. You know, I, I found um, three cc's of acicaline in my house, like in an old, in a drawer. It, it must have... I must have pushed it. It must have got lost at the back of the drawer. Three original ampules. What do you think? Do you think if I put those on, on eBay or on Craigslist, they'd be worth anything? I think so. If they were the original acicaline, I think for sure. Yeah. I think you'd probably put it in like a showcase in your house, like like in a, on your mantelpiece, right? You'd like frame it. I'd, probably, I'd, probably, shoot, I'd probably shoot that yeah. shit. <laughs> Maybe I'll send them to Boston just to, just so we can shoot them online, like for nostalgia. You know, you got to take I'll a good video. I'll shoot them online and then I'll do a workout with them. There you go. All right. People want to know what you think about the Kevin Lavroni comeback. Uh, Kevin Lavroni comeback. I think it's uh, very, very, very interesting. I, I like it because – it's going to bring a lot of people that never watched the Olympia back to watch the Olympia. But unfortunately, Dave, he's going he's gonna to get crushed. It's going to be very sad to watch. He's going to get destroyed. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to say he's going to be definitely in the la one of the last call-outs, if not the last call-out. Really? Um, and, and it's, it's going to be very frightening. Um, I have a friend that saw him in a Maryland bar um, a few weeks back. And he was wearing like skinny jeans, I guess, like you know, skinnier jeans. And I guess he has no legs on him at all. Really? Now, if, if Kevin Lavroni called up uh, you, Boston, on the phone and said to you, you know, uh, look, you know, I've been out of the game for 15 years. I, I don't really know what the right drug stacks. Would you would would you help him out with his drug stack? Yeah, I, I would definitely help him. And, and the funny thing with that is, I think that there's a lot of. I think the drug quality back in his day is so much better. That what he's going to do is he's going to take you know the drug doses that he got away with back in the day when there was better quality, and he's not going to get the same result. I think he doesn't realize that the gear these days are not as good. And you know what though, I saw a video. He's over in Iran, and uh, I'm not going to lie. I I I, uh, I bought some Iranian test amps a couple weeks ago, and I just started them up. And Dave, I I sort of got it. I was so fucking horny. I was way fuller. <laughs> This shit was like pretty strong, so like I, he, that's why he's in Iran oh, right now. Is I think he's getting good quality <laughs> shit now. But well, that, that would be that, smart. If he, yeah. getting, if, if he was using American-made stuff, I think he would definitely have to use more than he's ever had before. What if he wanted to? What if he wanted to come stay down, you know, with you in, in, in the Tampa area there, and you so you could shoot up his pecs and his, his legs and all those body parts every day before he goes to the gym? Would you help him out like that? Yeah, hell yeah, I would do. I, I love experimenting, Dave. 
I, I got another question. People want to know if you would if you would ever join the Camel Crew out there in uh, Kuwait. Would you ever move out there and train with the Camel Crew if they invited um, you? If I if I was trying to be a pro and stuff like that and be yeah. a good, good bodybuilder, like a, a great bodybuilder, yeah. Because I think I think they know something, Dave. I think they're up to something. I, I think talk, they have better uh, drugs. That's what I, it is. I, I talked to Samir Banut at the Crunch oh. Gym in Northridge when I visited my parents for Christmas or November. It was no, no, December. I saw Samir there and I go, Samir, I go, what's with all these fucking guys over in in uh, in, in these different you know Middle right. Eastern countries? They're like, why are they so? He's like, they know, he's like, they're using a ton of shit, ton of good stuff. He's using, they're using real folistat. And he's like, they're fucking loaded up there. So there's something, there's something over there, Dave. All right. Well. Uh, you know, maybe there is. I think they just have the real drugs over there. That's what I think it is, actually. Um, but and it's also an environment conducive to you know to training and, and Dave, growing. Dave, do you think that's the reason why the quality, like a bodybuilder, will come in one year looking a fucking fantastic, and then the next year they look like shit? Do you think it's because they're they're using fake shit? I I think it could be. You know, I've had clients who send me pictures, and I. You know, I hate to write this email to them, but I, I, so I it happens sometimes. I have to write the email to them, and I have to ask them, you know, if they're on, if their gear is real, because they look so bad. You know, sometimes I say you look natural. You know, luckily now with Bill Llewellyn created these Roy test kits, which I'm selling a lot of on DavePalumbo.com because people now can at least test their gear to see if it's real. That's, now you can't tell the dosage. That's but, true, and I like that, Dave. But they could be, you know, five milligrams right, per right, ml, right. and it would still come up positive. True, true. All right, well, let's. Uh, I got another person I want to ask you about. Uh, you've had a, a couple feuds with him online, Louis Marco. Now I got to just before you comment on that, Louis Marco is a guy with a YouTube channel that gets so many hits that it's almost unfathomable of, of how many hits he gets. You've had a feud going on with him. What's what? What is your take on Louis Marco? Me and Louis have never had a feud. Oh no, no. He loved. He loves me. He always wants to do interviews with me and stuff. No. We've never had a, a, a no. feud. I um, I don't know. I, I why I do people he, like I, his channel? Why do you think he has so many viewers? Well, he posts a, a ton about bodybuilding, and he gets his he gets responses from like Kai Green, uh, Kevin Lavroni. He gets responses from big guys, and he posts about them. I I think he has a lot of good content on there. You know, he 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 puts out funny shit. And people like funny shit, you know, like the big synthol guys. He puts that out. He, uh, he he's, he's. I think he has a good following, and I, I think he'll continue to grow. Do you think it's because his uh, he's got the accent? I thought it was the accent that might do it. You know. Yeah, because you, he he didn't have any kind of following uh, when, when I made my video, because he made he made a response video to my first video I ever made, and he had no following at all. And it's grown. It could be the accent. It could be, you know, because he's from Quebec or Canada or yeah. wherever he's from. Yeah. It could be. Um, I, I don't know. But uh, I think he has a lot of good content. I think that's why people continue to go to his page because there is a lot of good stuff on there. I might have to get him on the, uh, on the TV show to interview him because he does have a, a very big following. Uh, what do you now? I know you and Sean Ray have gone back and forth. Sean Ray has said that you're going to be dead before you're 30. He said, "Yeah, he like he like he like makes memes about me. It's hella it's hella funny actually. I've never actually I've never spoke to him in person. Um, I was at the 2011 West Coast Classic or 2010 West Coast Classic, and his little daughter was the guest poser there. She actually did an awesome job. She was probably like three years old at the time." Um, she did a guest posing, and I saw him there. But obviously, that was before any of that. I didn't know who he was really. Um, and yeah, he's always he's always talking shit, you know. But uh, I always talk shit back. And Dave, I, I don't take anything on social media seriously. Like that shit's all funny to me. Like I've never had a problem in person, and I think people take the internet too serious because, you know, it, yeah, I don't like when people spew lies on the internet. But as far as, far as shit talking goes and stuff. I think it brings more interest to bodybuilding. There should be a little bit more controversy. Imagine if Phil Heath and you know Phil Heath and you know Kai Green were talking shit to each other on Facebook and shit. It would yeah. bring so much more attention to the Olympia. It would bring so much more. I think it would be a lot more exciting. I agree with you 100. percent And I think Sean's a shit talker too. He doesn't take anything serious. When I see him in person, I mean we we shit talk each other all the time. And, you know, I don't have a problem with Sean. I don't care because I don't take myself seriously either. Now, people are asking about a guy by the name of Jason Blaha. What's what's the deal with you and him? Oh, he, he's he's made a few videos bashing me, but he actually commented on my last video saying he likes he loves my content and that I'm honest 
and uh, it's funny. It's funny because, um, yeah, and it's funny, Dave, because I, I get, I, I get, you know, I go back a little bit. I'm like, you know what? Maybe these guys are not using these crazy doses, you know, you know, because I see these cycles that George Farah puts his guys on, and then I find out from like good sources, Dave, and I'm talking about good sources that have trained these top guys, and they'll send me their programs, Dave, and I'm like, wow, you know, it is. It is crazy, you know, it is. It's chemical warfare at that level, and people don't want to go there. People don't want to talk about it. Uh, Chris Aceto is one of those guys, Dave, that he truly uses low doses on his guys. But saying that, he brings his guys in shape, but he can't grow anyone in the offseason. I've never seen anyone grow with Chris Aceto except for Jay Cutler, you know, so I, I don't know. I, well, I think Sean Roden. Sean Roden put a lot of size on this uh, from 2015. Yeah, but, 14 I, to 15. but Roden also trains at the Mecca and, and is friends with Dave Kalick. You know, I don't think he's using those doses as that uh, Chris is telling so him. So, what, what kind of doses is, uh, are you hearing that George Farah is putting people on? Even though he probably very, would, would claim that he doesn't even know what a steroid is. Very, very low. I mean, like. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about Farah, not Aceto. No, that's what I'm saying. Very low. Oh, so you think he's lying, in other words? Um, he's lying because he sends these out to regular clients. I, I haven't seen George's uh, programs to actual good bodybuilders. These are to normal guys. Like if I was to hire him, you know, like 750 makes a test E, 200 primo a week, and like 300 EQ a week. Yeah, that's that's pretty low. But you know, then again, you know, when you when you're dealing with a genetic freak, you know, you, you don't really need to give them a lot. But I I would tend to believe that the uh, top pros are using more than that. Um, everyone keeps asking. Um, about uh, if you think that Phil Heath will win the Olympia, I don't think you give a shit. But do you think he'll win again? Yeah, he'll win. He'll win. Uh, you, you know, you know who's really good right now, Dave, and, and me and him have gone at it a few times. Is that that Dallas McCarver kid? He, he's fucking good, man. He's yeah, good. I agree. I think he's going to kick some ass at the uh, Chicago. And Pro he's Show. he's he's better. Than, he's um he's actually surpassed Compton, and he's way younger. I agree with you. In, in my opinion, Dave. Compton is a great body. He was a great bodybuilder. He was. He looked very good at the um, at the Europa. You know when he when he beat Del Rosa. And something has happened, man. I don't know if he's trying to get too big too quick. He's kind of maxed out, and he doesn't have the density that McCarver has. McCarver is bringing a very grainy look, and who knows? It could be the way that he's training. McCarver is training very heavy. You know, there's videos of him doing 700 pound deadlifts. Um, he's training very heavy. Uh, squatting six plates for reps, you know, shit like that. And there's a different density he has than these guys that are t using a ton of insulin, using higher volume. I think your methods are the best. I think training with as heavy as weight as you can for high intensity in, in, in lower rep periods is going gonna, is gonna to get that grainy look. I, you know, I, I obviously agree with you. You know, I, I think that a lot of these guys are afraid to train heavy and then, and then they wonder why they're not growing or they're not adding dense you know quality muscle that's now, a lot of it is like a lot of these trainers these days these high-tech gurus they're loading their clients up with pop tarts and a ton of carbs Dave I mean a ton of carbs and a ton of insulin and a ton of high volume stuff and I think obviously it volumizes the muscle it, it, you get that fullness but when you come down and you diet hard you're gonna lose a fuckload of that and you're not gonna have that dense look to you hmm. Do you um, think that uh, Daniel and Bailey is really natural? Uh, the no, way George 100% Farris is? not. Do you, do you? I don't think so, but uh, George Farris swears she is. I think she says she is too, right? Of course. She's a, she's not only said she has, she bashes steroids, Dave. She's uh, Me and her and, and Rob Bailey have got in, in on it a few times. Rob Bailey called me in 2014 on the phone. Um, but, um, yeah, according to Dana, she's 100% now. Natural. She says, I actually like to have hair on my head. I actually like to look like a female. And I mean, that's a bunch of bullshit because there's a lot of girls that take steroids that look very feminine. Yeah. Well, I will say one thing. She, does, she doesn't She does look like she has any steroidal side effects to me. But um, So if she is using but anything, it might be about low it. dose. If, if a girl runs 10 mgs of Anivar for eight right. weeks and right. uh, 20 mgs of Novadex for eight weeks getting ready for a show and they come off completely after the show... It, it, will they really get any side effects? Right. No, you're right. I, I think that she's using whatever she is using. If she is using, I don't anything. think she uses anything in the off season, no, Dave. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Uh, people want to know what your take is on Cody Montgomery. Um, he, he's undersized. He will never be good. He will never be good, Dave. Why do you feel that? 
He will never be. He will never be able to put on the muscle that that like a McCarver or a um, you know or a Phil Heath has. He just won't ever get there. Because he's why his structure's not big enough. Is that what you think? Yeah, I've I've seen I've seen pictures of him next to other guys that I've stood next to. He's just not a bit. And you've probably stood next to him too because you used to interview him at Team Nationals. Yeah, yeah. He just doesn't have that big structure, Dave, to ever be that big. Hmm. Um. Of the uh, new crop of guys, like, rank the top three, would you say, that are in their 20s still? That you would say were the top three guys in their 20s? McCarver, number one. Um, number two. Uh, is, is Nathan Diasha, is he in his 20s? Yes, he is. Dallas McCarver, Nathan Diasha, and probably Justin Compton, even though I think Compton's he's using the wrong approaches. I think he's eating too much. Hmm. What about Big Rami? What do you feel about him? No, I, I think I don't think he'll ever be able to get shredded, Dave. I think Rami has a, has a has a either an, an issue with binging during contest prep, or he just or he just can't like look at the scale and be like, oh, I'm two sixty five shredded. He has to be in the two nineties. I, I think he's worried too much about the scale. Hmm. You could be right because uh, Chris Cicito had hinted, you know, whether you know his mindset would be strong enough. Uh, to get in to win the Olympia, uh, but I know Chris is obviously dieting him, so we'll have to see what happens this year. Uh, I mean, Dave, uh, if you were to prep Big Ramy, would you approach a prep like you approach everyone else? Would you start him off on, on a keto style diet? No, no, absolutely not. No, he's a genetic freak. But you know what? I, I've heard from people that have worked with him, including Chris, that you'd be shocked. He doesn't need a lot of food. Uh, his body just retains muscle. He's just like a real genetic freak. Uh, but then I've heard from Dennis James that he that you know he cheats on the diet. So I don't know. I, I don't you know who who knows what to believe really. Yeah. All right. Well, last per, last person I want to ask you about. Uh, I know you had a feud with him just recently online, and he's a great guy, and I'm sure it was a funny feud. But Fuad Abiyad, what what went on with him and you? So he posted a diet on SciTech. He tagged SciTech in the post, and it was a post with and Dave is the SciTech still the SciTech still sponsor your 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 uh, podcast. Um, once in a while, they sponsor our contest coverage. Yeah. So. Okay. So, so he's a SciTech athlete. So, and I don't know anything about SciTech products. It could be great. I don't know, Dave. I have no idea. But what I'm saying is, his diet, Dave. He posted his contest diet, and it was three shakes, three SciTech whey shakes, with um, with one amino acid SciTech. And remember, he made sure he put 100% SciTech whey protein on it. Okay. And then the other three meals were like th uh, six ounces of flank steak. Uh, the other one was like oatmeal. Um, it just Dave, the diet didn't even it didn't make like there was literally no fats in the diet, right? Except for the steak. Oh no, he had whole, whole eggs in there, but no whites. The the protein was literally under like it was like under two hundred twenty grams of protein in the diet, Dave. And uh, and the the carbohydrates were you know from oatmeal. That's it, you know, in his shakes. It, it, the diet just was just – I know for a fact that this guy is not just eating six ounces of protein per meal. Right. So you, you called him out on it. And did he respond? Correct. Correct. And he, he, he responded. He got all butthurt. And what did he say to you about it? Or what did he post about it? He just talked shit. He's like, I know your coach. And I'm like, really? Well, I don't have a fucking coach right now. <laughs> like he was like, I talked to your current coach. And I'm like, dude, I don't have a fucking coach right now. Like I don't know what you're talking about. So like he was making up bullshit. Yeah. Um, he was like, I, your coach says you're a nice guy, but you know, so-and-so you'll never win another show because of the politics. He basically called out the IFBB saying, I'll never be rewarded for my physique. Well, you know, um, people have said that before and you did win your class at the last show, didn't you? Dave, I had a bunch of fatties next to me. They, they can't do that. Well, I, I don't, th but I don't think anyone's ever given you like a terrible placing, you know, because of your outspokenness. No, I've never, I've never had a problem with politics ever. I've never complained. I got beat fair and square in Connecticut by a bodybuilder that was out of my league. I have never been politically fucked ever, not even close. Yeah, I agree. And, so, and and this year, this year somehow, Dave, they fucking shafted me. And in and every every uh, I've had pros message me, Dave. Saying I can't comment on this because I don't want you know so and so to see, but that was bullshit. I mean, Dave, I was 245 pounds. This guy was 195 pounds. I had a better structure than him. I was more conditioned than him. My tan was lighter than his, 
and they gave it to I mean every I've had I had guys in the audience come up to me like dude like this is bad like and not only did they do that Dave they gave him straight ones they didn't even want to make it even close to four to three or they gave all seven judges had him one yeah is that one of the reasons why you're not competing anymore or is it just, just well, Dave, I, I was supposed to do four shows this year, but honestly, Dave, like I, I said, I wasn't going to do that. Sh um, I said I was done competing after that show, and the main thing is I was, Dave. Like when Ariella was putting that tan on me in the hotel room after I had shaved and packed all my meals and feeling miserable in my tan, I knew I was done, Dave. Before I even lost that show, I knew I was done. Now you, uh, even if I won that show, I would have probably been done. Uh -huh. Now your nickname is Three CCs, or you know your business Three CCs. You have it on your your truck and everything like that. But um, what was the most CCs you've ever put into a muscle in one shot? Uh, six CCs in my glute. Now what'd you use? A big ten CC plunger? Uh, just a, 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 a the the six the five CC syringes actually have an extra CC on them. It'll say like pulled to the six. Right. And I, and I and I loaded one in my glute. Did you get an infection from that? No, you you have put six CCs in your glute before, right? No, I've never put that many in my. I, I gotta say, I've never put that much. I once took a five CC synthol shot just to see how it would look, but uh, it's a lot of volume. It doesn't really come out of that syringe so easily either because it's a it's a big bulbous syringe. It's like you got your finger falls off by the time you push it all in. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I I mean, everyone thinks that you used to use crazy crazy amounts. No, I didn't. People didn't use it. Like you said, people didn't need to. I think the gear was better back in the 90s and early 2000s. Yeah, but, but Dave, do you have clients now that you have to put them on more? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't do excessive dosages with my clients. I don't know if they – maybe some guys don't listen to well, me. But thing, Dave, I think a lot of people are like you though. You're going to get 90% of your – 95% of your clientele are normal guys. You're not going to tell them to take waste – Three thousand dollars on a cycle for a yeah. stupid little NPC show that they could probably win with minimal gear. You know what I mean? But if you were to take a guy like, let's say, Dave, if I came to you in five years and I was at that point where I could actually get a pro card easily, let's say I had the physique there and I was to hire you, would you still bullshit me on low dosages or say, if I'm like Dave, I've been on three grams of, of, of tests my whole off season? Would you keep me on three grams of test or would you lower me? I would lower you. I have to be honest with you. you know, we're, I'm a very honest guy too. I, I don't believe you need that much gear. I'm going to tell you that. I've told you that before. And you know, you and I have done work together. I've done your diet. I know you, you did your own gear type stuff, dosages. So, but me, I, don't, me, I don't think you need that you much. Have you ever I've, heard of a pro take three, to three grams of test or more? I'm not. I they may do that, but I know back in the day. I know that guys like Dorian Yates and 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 Coleman they didn't need to do that much gear. So no, I'm, I'm not saying them, but I'm saying, have you ever heard of anyone doing three grams of test? I've heard guys now? doing five grams of test, but that doesn't okay. make it right. Okay, no, I'm just I'm just <laughs> curious because I'm glad you're you're saying this because everyone's like nobody goes over a gram of test. No, like, they do. People just, do it all the time. You're right. I mean, they're absolutely right. Do I think it's right? No, and I don't think it's necessary. And I think that you know what I see so many guys that I came up with in the industry that are dead today, guys that are my age and and younger. And I'm just I'm I'm thinking, well, what the hell is going to happen in in 15 years from now when the guys today get to their 40s? Will do they you, even make it that you, far? Do you believe in a taper up effect though? In in what sense? Meaning, as you get bigger, you're gonna as you get bigger as you're on the drugs more often. As you get older, you're going to have to start putting a little bit more into your body. No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. That's crazy. So you think, think that you could continue to grow on minimal doses? I, I think that guys uh, at some point don't need to grow anymore. And I think these guys are, are pushing the envelope oh, no, too much. I, I agree. I, I agree. I think there's great bodybuilders on minimal doses. But I'm talking about the freaks. I mean, if you think Big Rammy is only on a gram or something of test. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I don't believe that. You know what? I think he's a bad example because he might he might just be on a gram of test or less because this guy's a freak. I think that, that some of the other guys, you know, you're talking about are on a lot of stuff. But you know what? I, I, I don't think it's necessary. I just don't think it's necessary. And I don't think it's worth spending the bank, spending everything you got in the bank, your mortgage payment to, to buy, you know, 30 I use a GH a day. I don't now, think it does any. Do I don't you, think it, it, you get any returns from that. I really don't. Do you do, you, do you believe this? Uh, I, I talked to Hani Rambod in 2014. No, 2013, um, at the booth at, at, in San Jose when I used to live in Northern California. He told me, Dave, that fucking Phil Heath has never used insulin. <laughs> I I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't, I don't believe anything that comes out of anyone's mouth except for you, to be honest with you. So I take everything that people tell me with a grain of salt because I think they're all liars, to be honest yeah, with you. Like, it's, I, you know what I call it? It's like half truth. They, they tell the half truth. You know, it's like name your cycle and they name, you know, three of the drugs of this eight that they're on right. and half the dose. You know right. what I mean? Right. It's like the person who, uh, who can't lose any weight and they tell and you ask them if they cheated. They said no. And then when you go through the diet with them, you find out they're eating uh, 18 ounces of protein instead of, you know, eight ounces of protein. And they're like, but, but that's on the diet. That's not cheating. People can rationalize anything, you know. So, Dave, if I was to work with you again and, and you were like, and I was at like, you know, would you ever bring, would you bring my protein up to, this is crazy. I hear of guys having to eat 12 to 16 ounces of protein per meal. Well, they do that because they don't put any essential fats in their diet. So okay. what they're doing is That's they're getting their fats so through the protein. They're getting their calories from, from the wrong source, correct? Right. Well, they're, they're actually getting their fats indirectly from the protein. So what they're noticing is that they're not making gains until they raise their protein to a, to a pound at every meal. So, and they're getting their fats indirectly. It's a very inefficient way to extract your, your, your fats. It would be better off to lower your protein and just yeah. raise the fats directly, you know? Yeah, I, I think I think I need to hire you again for off season because <laughs> I, I just I, I I'm great with my clients, Dave. I write a structured plan and I'm great with them, you know, and I have everything. But when I do it myself, I always double guess myself. And you know, my clients look honestly like I, I every client that hires me, they're happy with the results. I you know, I bring them in. I'm I'm not crazy with the drugs like people think. I, if they give me a goal, I put them on the drugs needed. But I think I do need someone, you know, to to say because when I travel or when I do this, I could just pack the meals. You know what I mean? And right. you're like me. You're simple. You're two egg meals, one steak meal, two chicken meals. Boom. Right. Right. And everyone else you hire, you got Dave Calix saying, "I want you on three ounces tilapia, two ounces of chicken, one ounce <laughs> of rice, two ounces of sweet potato," and you got to, you know, make all these different uh, things. I think people complicate it too much. Absolutely. I, I'm I'm all about simplicity. The, the, the most complex problems always have the simplest solutions. And uh, a final question of the evening, and we could probably go, we could probably do another two hours of the show, but final question, uh, top, name your top three gurus in the industry that you respect. If I can't prep someone, Dave, because I only take on, uh, actually it was only, I only take on five guys at once. Right. I just bumped it up to seven I, because two people that you know really wanted, and because that the reason is is because I set everyone up on a carb and a fat cycle. I call them and I make sure they have a notebook and I and I just and I talk to them about their diet on the phone, and I it's just too stressful for me to take any more than that. Right. I send them to you because first of all, you're not as low as these other guys with drugs. You 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 tell it more how it is. You have guys on gram a gram of test usually like 350 every other day. Right. And I, and if I send them to other guys, they put them on like 500 megs of test. Um, so you're you are my number one go to person for prep. If, if I can't do it, um, number two would be Chad Nichols, but he doesn't seem to take anyone on. He doesn't yeah, seem to uh, take anyone on. And um, I think Aceto is the most overrated guru in the industry right now. <laughs> really? Why do you say that? Uh, I think he's just super overrated. I've seen his drug cycles. I've seen his diets. Um, He's super – what I do give Chris is he's super involved with his guys, meaning he calls them on the phone, you know, and he, 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 he makes changes every day and stuff, which I don't believe that there needs to be changes every day, maybe maybe once or twice a week max, you know what right. I mean? Right. And he's very involved and I like that about him, but I don't think he's as knowledgeable as people think, you know. In this day and era, maybe back then, you know, when, you know, when everything was more simple and the drugs were better, yeah, but – I I I've, I know guys, Dave, that have hired Chris and haven't and haven't seen any progress. You only hear about the guys that he works with that are pros. Hmm. Well, I, I think Chris's uh, talents are in his ability. Let to me ask you this, instincts. Dave, because this guy's getting big on the ski scene. He's training a bunch of people. What do you think about Matt Jansen? You know, I don't know that much about him. I don't like to really comment on people. I don't, I, like, I don't know what he does with guys. So um, okay, but Dave, I think George Farah is very good. You don't think he's good? I don't know. I think he's a liar, so I don't. I don't believe a lot of what he says. So, um, and I don't really. I mean, I don't see too many guys that he's uh, that have impressed me, other than the top guys that are genetically gifted that have already, you know, won shows. Dexter's won a gazillion shows before he worked with with George. Same thing with with Kai Green. So to me, that's not that impressive. Take a guy who's an amateur, make him a pro, and then make him. That's a what I'm talking about. And you don't see anyone that Aceto does that to. 
No, I, I've seen a lot of guys at Aceto. What about this guy, Regan Grimes, who just turned pro, or Sasarati, or, I mean, Chris has got a, a laundry list of guys that he's, you know, taken to the pro level. So um, I, uh, I disagree in that sense with you. Yeah, I mean, but Dave, he, he has very low fats in the diet. Yeah, he, he's an Chris is an instinctual uh, dieter. In other words, he's kind of like the Italian. I always use this analogy: the uh, the old grandma, the Italian grandma, who doesn't will never tell you what's in the. She doesn't know what ingredients are in the food she makes. She just kind of throws shit in there, but she knows what foods to put in there to make it taste perfect. And Chris has got instincts. He couldn't write it down. He'll never be able to quantify well, I, it. I, I I think Chris has an amazing eye. But I, I, but for off season, he gets people in shape, Dave. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I'm saying I, I, I like guys that can put on a muscle on somebody. I like guys that grow. Right. And you know, I've seen guys grow under you know Blue Taylor's guidance. You know, I've seen a, a lot of people grow under Dave Kalik. I think Dave Kalik is really good for the off season. But then pre contest, he falls apart because he tries to get really technical with people. <laughs> well, you so, know, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think. There's, there's, Huh? Yeah. I was going to say, I think that certain guys are better off-season versus pre-contest. I think pre-contest is an art form, and you have and to what, have good instincts. Dave, what, do you, what do you think you're better at, off-season or pre-contest? I, I actually think I'm better. I'm, I'm actually balanced. I would say I'm 50-50. Most guys are either better at one or the other. I think I'm better. I think I'm a little better only pre-contest because... I get more updates that way. You know, you know how people are off season. People tend to like forget to send you updates, and they they because they they don't really feel like they have any pressure on them to attain a certain level of of a look by a certain date. When they're pre contest, yeah. they send more I updates. Think, they're a little more on top of things. Um, yeah, I, like like I said, Dave. Like I tell people to this day, the best thing I ever did was hire you because you. I never had healthy fats in my diet ever, Dave, until I hired you. And, um, you know, the only fats I would ever get was when I had my binge cheats. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest change in my diet is, is, is adding Mac oil. And that's what a lot of my clients, that, that's another thing I forgot you even, that they buy a ton of Mac oil from you too. Yeah. You're, you're so, one of the biggest referrers to the Species Nutrition website because I have a, you have a coupon code that you give out and I could track your uh, sales. Yeah, you're, you're am huge. I still, am I still up on the top? You're, I think you're number one still. Yeah, you're the number one referrer, which is, uh, you know, I appreciate that, obviously, and I appreciate your friendship. And that's why, you know, like I said, people can say what they want about you. You know, really what they're saying is they don't like the fact that you're so open about, you know, And you know, you, you know are. me, Dave, like I don't ask for much. It's not like I'm fucking, you know what I mean? Like I, I just like helping people. It's like yeah. you scratch my back, I scratch yours. I'm not one of those guys that's trying to get you know money out of people, and you know I, I'm pretty pretty like you in that kind of sense. But you also know that, I, and I've said this to you before, so this is not the first time I'll say it. I I, I am concerned about the dosages that you do on a regular basis. Only even because now, I, even now, yeah, those doses. Well, I've told you. yeah, but this has just been like a week that you've been on these dosages. It, it, they can no, triple. No, no, no. This has been this has been since the show. I've been on lower <laughs> stuff. Right. But I'm saying they could triple or quadruple at any moment. You know, whatever you get an inkling up your butt that you want to like get big again or something like that or change something. Oh, up. Yeah, no, no, I mean, I'm I'm pretty. Dave, if I if you if you could if right now I'm a lean two fifty. Can't you lie to people? Can't you just tell them you're taking like six hundred IU's of GH and not really take it? No, <laughs> couldn't do it. Now, now, Dave, I'm two fifty pretty lean right now. If I told you I wanted to be two seventy pretty lean, do you think you could do it in a year? Yeah, absolutely. If you if you'd listen, but you know what? The, I I think one of the, the most telling statements of Boston uh, Lloyd's life was when he was on the Heavy Muscle TV show. I asked him what his great, greatest passion in life was, and his answer was what? Say, steroids, right? Oh yeah, it's, I, I, no, not maybe not pinning steroids because I'm actually kind of sick of pinning steroids. No, you now. said it's steroids in general. Steroids. You said steroids in general. I think was your greatest passion. Yeah, in yeah, life. Steroids, yeah, for sure. <laughs> And on that it's note, interesting. it's interesting. Like, how does that not interest you? Like, I don't know how you don't. I'm I very interested. I'm I think if me and you, I think if me and you hooked up, right, <laughs> and I did my own drugs and followed your diet, and I yeah. use like the the new peptides on the market right. that you haven't researched, like MK six seven seven. It's a nice growth hormone response, but I really like it for appetite. If, if, if we were to hook up, I use your diet and did my drugs, I yeah. think we would be a great team. I, I agree. I agree. If I could only get you to listen to me drug-wise, I might be able to Dave, get you to live I a little longer. Listen to you, Dave, I listen to you 100% for the Contra Cost, I swear. Even that one time that I got sick with food poisoning, I'm like, Dave, I fucked up. I yeah. ate a hamburger. Yeah. I told you. No, you did. And you won the overall the Contra Cost under yeah, my guidance. So maybe you should listen to me all the time, even regarding drug cycles. <laughs> 
You know what? You'll hit when I was when I was your age. I will tell you this. I was also obsessed with steroids to the point that I was back in the day. They didn't have underground labs. So what we I would do is I would collect. I was like a like a like a museum collector. I would want a bottle of the original veterinary Winstrel V, and I would want to get. I I had vials of. Permistrol, which was from France, that was the Masteron that was from France, the name brand. And I had all these these antiques that, that I read about in the uh, Underground Steroid Handbook and all these other things. And I had them in like little boxes, display boxes. And I That's would like, fun. I'd go to my room and I'd look at them like I would play with them like they were like G.I. Joe dolls and stuff like that. And then, and then some yeah, guy. Dave, I, I can't lie to you, I'm the same way, man. <laughs> like when my steroid packages come in, I get a hard on. <laughs> But at some point, I got over it. You know, now now I'm into other things like snakes and and, and running my my nutrition yeah. business. But but uh, hopefully you'll outgrow that stage. But I have a feeling you're probably not going to. No, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I make my living doing it, so I mean, it's right. it's not a it's not a bad thing. Well, it was great talking to you as always, and uh, thanks for being so forthright and open about everything. And uh, keep us updated. All right, man. Have a good day. All right, that will take us to the end of another episode of Live with. Brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.